Uh, so, hi. Before we begin, I just want to say that this video is sponsored by the Vlog Brothers, John and Hank Green. And I can't believe I just said that sentence out loud. More about them at the end of the video? I guess not really because this is all that they wanted me to say. And they didn't even ask me to say it. All they asked was like, just put this in your video description somewhere. But I wanted to say it because holy mackerel, I've been a fan of theirs since like 2012. They're one of the biggest reasons why I started making YouTube videos. I used to daydream about them somehow becoming aware of my existence an entire decade ago, and now they do, and oh my god, younger me would have completely lost her mind if she knew. She would have completely lost her mind. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> let's, let's just move on to the video. Hi, I'm the Octopus Lady, you're watching Alien Ocean, and let's talk about sperm whales today, shall we? Okay, so I just want to make something clear before we kick this off. This is going to be one of, if not the only video I'm ever going to make about a marine mammal, because to be completely transparent, I don't like marine mammals. I don't. I've never liked them. Don't like this one, or this one, or this one. Yes, even this one. You think they're cute, but just look at him. Lazy jerk, just lying around like that. Why don't you get a job? And these two, and these two in particular are my least favorite. Cause look at them with their smug little grins. God, you can just tell that if dolphins and orcas were humans, dolphins would totally be into MLMs and orcas would totally be into cryptocurrency and NFTs which are just MLMs with extra steps, and art theft, and damage to the planet. Ugh, I can't stand them. Get them off my video. Get them off! And I know so many people right now are going to be like, how can you hate them, octopus lady? They're so cute and fun and charming. And I'm here to tell you that it's all a ruse. They're all terrible monsters who kill things for fun, which I have zero respect for. If you kill something, you either got to eat it or it's got to be in self-defense. But I've seen dolphins kill other smaller dolphins for no reason. I've seen an orca almost beach itself to kill a seal and then didn't eat it once it was dead, it just left its body there as it struggled to get back into the water, the absolute moron. There's that time that a sea lion used one of my kind as a weapon against a kayaker, and I've heard stories of sea otters who tear the fins off of small mola molas and throw them around like a frisbee. And I swear to God, if you're at home watching this right now and laughing, I will hunt you down and tear your limbs off and throw you around like a frisbee. Uh, sorry. Got a little carried away there. Despite all this, I do recognize how important they are in the ocean ecosystem, so I'm not calling for their extinction or anything. And there are some marine mammals that are fine. Like, I got no beef with manatees and the like. And I do like most whales. Actual whales, not your valor-stealing ones. But even then, I personally don't find whales as interesting as other organisms I've talked about on this channel, with the exception of the sperm whale. So there are basically three types of sperm whales in the ocean. There's the dwarf sperm whale, the pygmy sperm whale, and then just the sperm whale. They're all part of Physeteroidea? Don't know if that's how you pronounce it, which I think is a super family, but I will admit that I've gotten some contradictory information there. But the dwarf and pygmy sperm whales are in a completely different family, Kogeidae, from the sperm whale, which is in the family Physeteridae. And from what I understand, the sperm whale is the only extant or still living member of this family. Also, let's take a minute to address the elephant or the reproductive fluid in the room? Because, like, this is a name, right? Like, this is a name. Like, why do they have this name? Well, from what I understand, it seems that they're named after this organ inside their head called a spermaceti organ, which sounds like they're not named after sperm, right? They're named after this organ, but don't get too comfortable. The reason it's called the spermaceti organ is because it produces this substance that apparently looks like sperm, so much so that some people thought it was sperm. Like they thought that these whales stored their sperm inside their head. And there are so many jokes I can make right now that are not appropriate for my channel. But they called this substance spermaceti, and it is a big reason why sperm whales were hunted in the 17, 18, and 1900s. Because it could be processed into an oil that was used for candles, cosmetics, and, um, oh, lubricating the gears of the Industrial Revolution. Like, literally. So were sperm whales named after sperm? Not really, but also kinda? Side note, there's this structure next to the spermaceti organ 
that's just called <laughs> the junk. And that's so funny to me because like, how did that conversation go when they were naming it? Hey, what's this thing called? I don't think it has a name. We should name it. What should we name it? Man, who cares? It's just a bunch of junk. Sperm whales have been around for about 25 million years-ish, making them one of the youngest organisms we've had on this channel. And according to one article I read, quote, with the exception of humans and ugh, killer whales, few animals on Earth are as widely distributed as the sperm whale. Although females are mostly found in latitudes less than 40 degrees and in water above 15 degrees Celsius, and males, once they are old enough to leave their pods, tend to head more and more towards the poles as they get older and bigger. Sperm whales, to quote another paper I read, are odd creatures. About a quarter to a third of their body is just their head, which holds the largest brain in terms of absolute mass, weighing about 8 kilograms. The females are on average about 11 meters long and weigh 15,000 kilograms, where males are on average 16 meters long and... Oh wow, three times heavier, averaging about 45,000 kilograms. But this makes the sperm whale the largest toothed whale in the world, as opposed to the baleen whales, and also apparently the largest toothed predator in the world. Which is an odd phrase to me because it implies that there is a predator in the world that, that is larger than sperm whales, but doesn't have teeth and I can't think of any organisms like that. Also, their teeth are weird. Their whole mouth is weird. Their lower jaw has been described as, quote, narrow, rod-shaped, and underslung, which is a fun word to say. Underslung. <laughs> anyway, I can't look at it for too long because like it makes me uncomfy. It's just so weird and long and small compared to their head and they only have teeth along this part. Like they do have teeth in their upper jaw, but they're vestigial. Like they never actually grow into their mouth and their tongue doesn't cover their whole mouth floor like other toothed whales. It only covers the very, very back of their mouths. So it's short and wide and really thick and they can apparently open their their lower jaw to a 90 degree angle, which I don't like any of that. I don't like any of the energy that's giving, but like in a good way, you know what I mean? It's like, ugh, but hmm. And you know what's kind of wild? They apparently don't even need their teeth to eat. Quote, these teeth do not seem to be necessary for feeding as they do not erupt until near puberty and well-nourished sperm whales have been caught that lack teeth or even lower jaws? What the actual? You guys are so weird. You're so weird. Anyway, so sperm whales are extremely social animals. Ish. The males obviously spend their childhood with their mothers, but sometime between the ages of 4 and 21, they leave their pod and tend to spend the rest of their lives basically alone. Except occasionally in their adolescence, they will travel in loose groups with other males, which are called bachelor schools, even though they really should have been called bachelor pods. The females tend to spend their whole lives in groups with other females and their children, where childcare is communal, so mothers will let the infants of other sperm whales suckle on them, and they also babysit each other's offspring, for reasons we will get to in a little bit. And like most cetaceans, sperm whales use sound to echolocate and communicate with each other. That's the primary function of the spermaceti organ, along with the surrounding structures, like the air sacs and passages, the junk, and the museau de songe, which is apparently French for monkey museum? There seems to be a handful of different kinds of clicking sounds that sperm whales use. There are codas. which seem to be primarily used for communication, talking with each other. Another kind of noise they make are called slow clicks, which sound like this. Although it seems only males produce this sound, at first the sounds were thought to be tied to mating as they were first heard from males who were consorting with some females, but we've heard males making these noises when they're hanging out by themselves up in higher latitudes. There's also a third type of communicative sound that sperm whales make called squeals, but I unfortunately could not find a recording of them. This is apparently a fairly rare sound to hear, so it's not surprising I couldn't find a recording of it and also means that we don't entirely know what they're for. And then there are the typical sounds that sperm whales use when they're hunting, which I am super excited to talk about because, you see, sperm whales go hunting for giant squid, which is so 
cool. I can't get over how cool that is. Like you can see scars on the skin of sperm whales that they've gotten from fights with giant squid. Cause like, if you didn't know, giant squids have jagged little teeth in their suckers. And wait, hold up. They also found scars from giant squid suckers inside sperm whale stomachs? Like what? That is so unfathomably cool. And to anyone out there right now who's like, wait, if you hate most marine mammals because they kill each other, then shouldn't you especially hate sperm whales because they kill giant squid? I say bigotry isn't rational. You can't logic me out of something I didn't logic myself into. That's why you should never try to convince bigots to join your side. You should just do everything you can to make progressive change without their input or approval. But that's a different kind of YouTube video. Also, this is a bit of an exaggeration. They don't just hunt giant squids. They also hunt colossal squids! And they get scars from them too, because they have teeth in their suckers as well! No, but for real. They hunt and eat all sorts of squids, including squids from the families of... Um... Om... Omastrep... Uh... Omastrep... From these families, if I have to pronounce all these names, we're going to be here all day, but a sperm whale favorite seems to be histiotuthids, described as, quote, mesopelagic, gelatinous, pelagic, cephalopods weighing about 0.1 to 1 kilogram. Side note, did you know that the reason we've been able to figure out how big giant squid can get is because of sperm whales? See, squid beaks are really difficult to digest, so they just hang out inside the stomachs of the animals that eat them. You can also tell how big a squid is by measuring the size of its beak. So, scientists have found dead sperm whales washed up on shore, cut them open, fished out all the beaks, found the ones belonging to giant squid, measured them, and Ta-da! That's how we found out that giant squid can get to be so big without actually seeing one. Anyway, sperm whales use echolocation to hunt. They tend to send out regular clicking sounds when they start diving to find food, and then we're pretty sure they make this sound when they're honing in on something they want to eat. These are called creaks or buzzes, depending on who you're talking to. And all these clicking sounds can get loud. They can get up to be 236 decibels, which is louder than pistol shrimp and louder than the loudest sound that can be made on land. And I've heard that that level of noise can really mess up a human. Like it can, I don't know, I think I heard once that sounds that loud can start making organs rupture or something wild like that, but I couldn't find any sources to back that up, except for the CDC saying that noises around 120 decibels or higher can injure your ears. So we know that at the very least that sperm whale clicks can easily deafen a human, and this all means that sperm whales are probably the loudest living creatures on earth. Sperm whales spend about on average 45 minutes per dive at depths around 400 to 1200 meters, which is why we see babysitting behavior in pods. Some females will go diving for food while other females stay at the surface to watch all the kids, and then they switch when they return. It's believed that they primarily use suction to eat their prey, although I don't know how in any specific detail because, unfortunately, this is all we seem to know about sperm whale hunting behavior. It's not like we can follow them down there and cameras aren't where they need to be to see in all that darkness, which is such a bummer because I want to see a giant squid and a sperm whale fight! But it's fine. We do know what happens to them physiologically when they are diving, which is like a lot. So okay, there are basically three problems that sperm whales face when they're trying to swim down into the depths, which I'm calling the three B's. Buoyancy, breathing, and the bends. So let's address these one at a time. Okay, so first off, buoyancy. Sperm whales are naturally positively buoyant, which is a problem when you're trying to dive. Trust me, I know. But there seems to be some proof that spermaceti helps play a role in reducing this. Studies show that the substance in the sperm whale's head gets heavier the deeper the whale dives because of changes in temperature 
temperature and pressure, thus making it easier and easier to keep diving down. And it's shown the opposite happens when the whale is swimming back up to the surface. Second off, breathing. Sperm whales, like other mammals, need to breathe air. So how do they get the oxygen they need when they're underwater for, on average, 45 minutes a dive? Well, first off, they have very high concentrations of myoglobin in their skeletal muscles, which is an oxygen storing protein. And they have a whole lot of skeletal muscle because they're so big. The majority of their organs have also adapted to function under anaerobic or low to no oxygen conditions. So when they start their dive, sperm whales basically direct all their blood flow to just their brains and their heart, which is called peripheral vasoconstriction. And they slow their heartbeat down, which is called bradycardia. Sperm whales also have this complicated net of vascular tissue, vascular meaning, you know, like blood vessels, right next to their brain called the retia? Mir mirabilia? I think, which is also really great at storing oxygen. So they're just oxygen storing machines, sperm whales are. And then finally, the bends, which is better known in the medical community as decompression sickness. And this is... <sighs> This is a whole thing, but if you're a scuba diver, you know all about it. I guess to keep it kind of short, if you're breathing air under lots of pressure, like when you're scuba diving, a bunch of the gases in that air, like nitrogen for example, dissolve into your blood. And if you start rising back to the surface too quickly, there's a lot less pressure being put on your body, which can make those dissolved gases become undissolved. And now you have nitrogen bubbles in your blood, which is bad and painful and can kill you. For a long time, people actually thought that deep diving cetaceans couldn't get the bends, but that has proven to be not true. Sperm whales may be able to prevent decompression sickness through the Redia mirabilia? There seems to be some research showing that it can store potentially damaging air bubbles within all of its vascular goodness. Ugh, that's such a gross way to say it. Their lungs also get super compressed down to a fraction of their size at the surface, which pushes all the air into their trachea, which is really stiff and rigid, preventing air bubbles from escaping into the blood and ending up in places they shouldn't go. Not all these adaptations are unique to sperm whales, but as far as I'm concerned, they do it the coolest because they're the best marine mammal of them all. Their weird mouths and their huge heads and the fact that they fight giant squid makes them 10,000 times more dope than their lamer, meaner, jerkier cousins. Thanks so much for watching another episode of Alien Ocean, and special thanks again to the Vlog Brothers for sponsoring this video. Still can't believe those words are coming out of my mouth. And as always, special thanks to Brian Mann and Frisco Born for their help on this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And up in the corner somewhere is gonna be a playlist of all the other videos we've made. Come check me out on Twitter if you wanna see my marine biology hot takes on the daily. Sign up for our Patreon if you'd like to get early access to videos or get your name in the beautiful credits, or you just wanna support the work we do here on this channel. And finally, today's hopefully interesting question of the day is, do you think sperm whales should hold the title of being the largest toothed predator in the world when they don't even need their teeth to predate on things? Argue about it with each other in the comments, and until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood octopus lady reminding you that you don't have to go into space to find aliens.